Hey everybody, looks like we are live. What we are going to do, go over today is sales processes. That is, and there are many different words for this, by the way. A lot of people say funnel, people say marketing funnel, a sales funnel, a sales process, a customer journey. It's all the same thing. Basically what we're talking about is what are the steps to get from the point where a person doesn't know who you are, doesn't know your name, to the point where they become a paying customer. That is the marketing funnel, the sales funnel, the sales process, the customer journey, whatever you want to call it. So what we're going to talk about today is how to find the right one, because there are a number of different variations of sales processes. There's a whole bunch of different variations, just like there's a whole bunch of different businesses. And which business you have will determine which sales process is the best. And there may be multiple sales processes that work for the same business. And you can get stuck in kind of analysis paralysis with this, by the way, like, and this is something you find with the online marketing space with all the gurus that are touting, they have the perfect funnel and they, you know, they advertise that, Hey, use this funnel and you're going to make all this money. And it may be true. Like it may be a great funnel, it may not be a great funnel. It may be a great funnel for him, but not necessarily for you. And so part of the, the issue here is to figure out like which is the best one for you. And a, another big part of it too is just to focus. Because something that you find with marketing and business in general a lot is that there's a lot of different things that you can do and all of them work. Or maybe not all of them work, but a lot of them work. And this is... It, it, this is a very good frame to come from. A lot of people come from the frame that nothing works and everything is a scam. Those people are dead in the water. Like if they, they just don't believe anything. And so the, those, there's no hope for those people. It's like, yeah, they're never going to get scammed, but they're never going to succeed either because, well, they don't believe in anything. So if you don't believe in anything, then are you ever going to jump at an opportunity? No, you're not because you're never going to, you're never going to see that as a real opportunity. So you're, you're just, you're just done. Like there, there's no possible way you can succeed. If you're that sort of person, I would much rather be the opposite. I would rather be the most gullible person in the world than to be a cynic, right? Because even if I, let's see, I fall for absolutely everything. I believe everything that I hear. And even if nine out of 10 times I get, I get swindled, I get scammed, whatever. But that one out of 10 times that it's real and it's legit, if I go for it that time and I make a ton of money, I can, I can more than cover the amount of money that I lost by, by getting swindled in the past. But I, that's a little beside the point. But the truth is, and I've seen this myself repeatedly, is that there are a lot of different systems that work. I'm not saying that every system works, but a lot of systems work. And so when you hear like 10 different gurus that all have this different system, and then they're saying my system is the best. Well, the truth is probably more than one of those are telling the truth. I'm not going to say all 10 are telling the truth, but a lot of them are telling the truth. A lot of them do have a system that really works. The problem is, and this is a problem with a lot of people that, that do tend to believe in these things is not so much that they get scammed. Actually, this is a much, much bigger problem. Like there are people that are bad actors that will try to scam you or they'll like make false promises. But the much bigger issue is that the people that believe all the claims, they, they just jump from one thing to the next. And so you have a thing, you have a system that's working, in this case, a funnel or a sales process, you have a sales funnel that could be working amazingly well for you, but it takes some time, right? You're not going to just get it overnight. You're not just going to start using it. And all of a sudden the millions start flooding in. You're going to have to take some time to tweak it and to get used to it and learn the ins and outs of it. And, and to build it up for that matter, a lot of these, like the, the one that I do, especially these days, it takes some time to build up because um, and I, I might get to that later. I'm not going to get into the specifics of that right now, but you know, some of them take a little bit of time to build up. And so if you say, okay, I'm going to do this sales process today, and then you work on that for like a month. And then let's say you have it 
75% of the way built out. And then a month from now, you hear some other guru that's saying, hey, look, look at this new system, look at this new sales process. And then you're like, oh, that's better than the one that I'm using right now. Or it looks better than the one that I'm using right now. I'm going to go switch to that one. It's like, okay, maybe, maybe it really is better, but now you've just lost a month worth of progress, a month's worth of progress on the funnel that you've already been building that may have been a perfectly good funnel. And it could have been that that would have started paying off any minute, any day now, and now you're just back to square one because you switched to something else. And then if next month the same thing happens and you find some other new process and you switch to that, and then again, it might be a great process. It might be even better than the process you have now, but you have to consider the opportunity cost that you just gave up all of the work that you already did. So a lot of people never really get anywhere because they just skip from one opportunity to the next without taking the time to actually build out one in its, in its entirety. And people do this with businesses too, right? People that are the entrepreneurial types and, and we have, we have this problem just kind of built into our brains. Like if you are the sort of person that is likely to be an entrepreneur, you like novelty, you like trying different things. The problem is if you keep switching your focus, then you never have enough time. You never put in enough work to make anything really great. So you have to discipline your focus somewhat. So that's kind of my caveat before I get started on here. So there's, there is no one perfect, sales process. There's no one perfect funnel. Chances are there's a whole bunch of different funnels, a bunch of different variations that could work for you. But I'm going to give you some principles of what to look for in a sales process that will work for what you've got to offer. So there's a few different variables here. And before I, I tell you what those are specifically, I, I want to give you an analogy. Let's say that you would like to get married. Getting married is essentially a sales funnel. What you do, like the way that you go about finding somebody to marry and ultimately convincing that person to marry you, what you do is not the same for everybody. It depends on various different factors. It depends on the context in which you are situated. So for example, it depends on whether you are a man or a woman, right? The process for a man to find a wife is different than the process for a woman to find a husband. It depends on the culture that you're coming from. The process in the United States is different than the process in India. It depends on what the, the cultural norms are. It depends on the market, it depends on the type of person whom you would like to marry. Right. If you would like to marry somebody from a, a very religious background is going to be different than if you want to marry somebody who gets drunk at the club every night. Right. So you got to there. There are a lot of different factors that will that will help determine that will that you have to change. In your sales process, depending on the context of what you're doing. So. And by the way, if you are looking to get married, then knowing this will help. <laughs> I promise you, knowing this will help. Marriage is literally a sales funnel, right? And uh, I, when I say funnel, what I let me let me explain what I mean by the term funnel. So a sales process and a sales funnel are essentially the same thing, or a marketing funnel, it's called. So it's it's basically you reach out to a whole bunch of people that don't know you. So that's like the top of the funnel, and it's very wide. And then some of those people will be interested enough to go to the next step. So that's like a fraction of those people. So the funnel, it gets narrower. And then those people, of those people, a certain fraction will go to the next step, right? And it gets narrower still. And then the, then the, the final step will be the narrowest of all, right? So you're losing some people at each stage. So when we're talking about marriage, it might be that you let's say you let, let's use online dating as an example because that's very easy to to think about so let's say you're on tinder and you you swipe right on a bunch of people so that's the top of the funnel everybody that you swiped right on and if you're not familiar with tinder swiping right means that well, i think it's swiping what right actually i don't 
it's been a long time since I've been on there, so I don't remember. But it's, I think swiping right means that you're interested in the person, right? And then if the person is interested in you, then you, you match and then you can contact each other. So at the, the first time, it's here's all the people, that's like a big number of people that you swipe right on. And it takes a very small amount of effort to do that, right? And then of those, some, some percentage of those are going to be interested in you, right? So here's the people that you swiped right on. Here are the people that you matched with. And then you're going to message the people that you mess that you matched with or wait for them to message you as the case may be. And of those people, a certain number, a certain smaller number, you're going to actually have a meaningful conversation with, right? Of those, there's a certain number that you'll go on a date with. And then of those, there's a certain number of people that you'll have a long-term relationship with, with. And then of those, there will be a certain number of people, most likely one, that you end up getting married with, right? So you have this, there's all these different steps in the process. And because marriage is a big commitment, it requires a lot of different steps, right? You can't just like meet somebody on the street that you've never seen before and say, hey, will you marry me? It's probably not going to work because you're asking for a very big commitment. And in order to get that very big commitment, you have to do a lot to establish trust and establish it, make the person confident that they're making the right choice, that you are the right person to marry. So the same thing is true if you have a product that is a big commitment. So let's say you're selling a house. Well, buying a house is a pretty darn big commitment, right? Because it's a lot of money. A lot of times people are taking on a big debt to do it. It's, it's the place where you're going to have to live. You're going to have to wake up every day for the next however many years. And if you decide to sell the house, it's, a, it's difficult, right? It's like it's a lot of work to sell your house. And it's a lot of money to sell your house, too, because you got to pay the realtor and then you got to pay the closing costs and you got to pay the government taxes. And like, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you got to do and it's, and you know, it's a, it's a long process to get it sold. So buying a house is a very big commitment. And the bigger the commitment, the generally speaking, the, the more steps in your sales funnel, right? The longer it is now, there's a caveat here because it depends on who is buying, right? The size of the commitment depend is very relative depending on the person. So let's say that you're selling to somebody who has just gotten approved for their first mortgage. They have a job, they make 60 K a year and they just got approved for a mortgage. It's their first house. And, they're like, this is the house that they want to live in for the next 20 years. Well, that's a pretty darn big commitment, right? So that person is going to, you're going to have to build up a lot of trust in that person. Now let's contrast that with, let's say you're selling to a company that's like a real estate holding company that has like $50 billion in assets. They own thousands of houses and apartment complexes and, and commercial properties, and they want to buy your house. Well, to them, let's say it's the same house. Let's say it's a, a cheapish house. It's like $300,000. To them, is it the same level of commitment as to the, the new married couple that makes 60 grand a year? Well, no. I mean, technically, it's the same thing. It's the same investment, but to them, 300 grand is peanuts. It's, it's like to them, the sales process could be much, much faster and easier because the commitment relative to their position in the market is much smaller. And so you got to think about this in terms of like, what is the size of the commitment that I'm asking and specifically for the type of people that I'm selling to. So let's say that you sell coffee. Let's say you have a coffee shop and for $5, you sell a cappuccino. What is the level of commitment required to buy a $5 cappuccino? Well, it's very, very small, right? I mean, unless you're selling to somebody who only has $5 to their name, if you're selling to people that, you know, just have a normal job and make a normal salary, 
the $5 coffee is a throwaway decision. Nobody is going to go and research online for 10 hours trying to figure out whether or not it's worth the $5, right? Because, and you got to think about this all in terms of money, but also in terms of like time and effort invested. So a $5 cup of coffee is a very small amount of money and it's very small amount of time as well, right? Because what, you just go in, you go to the counter, chances are you're already on the way to where the person was going anyway. You go in, you buy the coffee, and then, um, and then it takes you like maybe 10 minutes. So the time investment is 10 minutes. The monetary, monetary investment is $5. It's basically zero effort because the person isn't making coffee themselves. They're just ordering it. That's it. So a very, very low investment. And if the coffee is bad, then what's the downside, right? Well, they lost $5 and they lost 10 minutes. So, I mean, that's, that's not a big deal. People are not afraid of that. Contrast that with the first time home buyers. Let's say they buy a house that's in a, a neighborhood that turns out to be a nightmare and their neighbors are crack dealers and the roof leaks and they need to replace their air conditioner six months after moving in. Well, that's, that sucks. Like that's a, a big risk in terms of both time and money and, and safety, right? There's other things as well. If you're, if your neighbors are drug dealers, then that's a, a and, and the water is dripping into your house and causing mold, which causes all sorts of health problems that most people are not aware of that's a big safety risk, right? So, so there's a lot on the line with the home buying decision as opposed to the coffee buying decision. So if you're selling coffee, then you don't really need a long sales process. You can pretty much just have a sign saying, Hey, we have coffee and people will come in. It's pretty easy. Now you can make it a little bit more sophisticated than that. All right. You can have an advertisement talking about your coffee. You could have a, a little coupon where you, like you get a free muffin with your coffee. You could talk about, I mean, you could, you could show that your coffee is rated five stars on Google. Like there's other things to, to show that, Hey, my coffee is great, but nobody's going to spend more than like two minutes researching the quality of your coffee. Right? So like whatever you can fit into those two minutes, then great. But, but you're not going to have this long sales process. You're not going to have long ads either, which is related, right? So let's think about now something that's kind of in the middle. Let's say that you sell a widget. Okay. There, here's a good one. I see this, this thing on the internet for a jacket, which is this kind of silly Google ads where there's this jacket that supposedly protects you from the rain. And the guy is, is holding an umbrella and he's wearing this jacket. And then the ad says, well, you don't need an umbrella anymore when you have this jacket. And the guy throws the umbrella behind him, which I, th I think is really dumb because it's like your, your whole head and face are totally going to get soaked because the jacket isn't covering that. But anyway, so they're selling a jacket. I didn't click on it. I don't know what their sales process is, but let's say the jacket costs a hundred bucks or maybe cost 50 bucks. Maybe a hundred is a little much. So they have a jacket that costs 50 bucks. So they, they have an ad that's just like a minute long and it shows the basic benefit of the jacket. And so, and it also, it shows somebody wearing the jacket, which is big too, because that communicates really what is probably the most important thing about selling a jacket, which is how does it look on me? So it looks pretty cool on the guy. The guy looks good, looks pretty cool throwing his umbrella behind him because he doesn't need it anymore. And, and then it says, okay, you, you know, it's going to keep you dry. So that's pretty much it. Like that's, that's the things that people are interested in the jacket. One, it's looks good Two, It's going to keep you dry. And then, I mean, they could go on and on about how it's made and like what factory it's made in, what country it's made in and what material it's made out of and what sizes it comes in and what colors it comes in, blah, 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 blah. Like they could go into all that, but they're probably not going to do that on the ad. Then, Probably my guess is what would be a good sales process for that is you click on the ad and then you go to a, a page 
where you just buy the jacket directly from the page. But probably the page has more information. Like the page will tell you where it's made and what colors it comes in and, and what fabric it's made out of and that kind of stuff. And then you can, you can order right from the page, right? Now, let's think about if you're going to sell a house, let's go back to that example. You couldn't use the same sales process, right? So you can say, here's how great the sales process, or here's how great the, the house is in a YouTube ad. People say, okay, that looks pretty cool. And they click on the YouTube ad. And then you have a sales page that says, okay, yeah, click here to buy the house for 300 grand. Right. That's, I mean, even if you could like put 300 grand on a credit card, which I'm pretty sure you can't, um, unless you have like some super exclusive credit card that I'm not aware of, but even if you could still, nobody's going to do that because they haven't, they haven't learned enough yet. They haven't built up, uh, built up enough trust and enough confidence. So let's think about something that's a little bit more intermediate. So I'll use, I'll use my, my product specifically. So what I do is I have a product where I help, I, I do consulting and sometimes I do done for you. So I will build YouTube ads for a company so that they're getting leads on autopilot. And then sometimes I won't actually build it for them. Sometimes I will show them how to do that or I'll, I will do it with them. So for that, that's something that my price points are anywhere from like a hundred a month at the low end up to like, like uh, 15 or 20 grand upfront. So for that, and I, I kind of use the same sales process for all of those price, all of those price points. It's just the, the real difference is the person that spends a hundred bucks a month is in a different situation, like a different level of sophistication than the person that's, that spends 20 grand. So the, the way that I do that is I have an ad to a free guide. So instead of saying, Hey, click on, you know, click on my ad and I will help you with your YouTube ads. I say, click on the ad to download this free guide that will show you how to do YouTube ads. And so they click on the ad, they get the free guide and then they presumably read the free guide. Truth is actually most people don't, but that's okay because I, I take their contact information in order to give them the free guide. And so they read the free guide or if they don't read the free guide, then at least they, they get my emails. You probably noticed I sent emails a lot. It's for exactly the same reason as I have the free guide. Right. It's so I'm asking for a moderate size commitment in terms of money and often in terms of time and effort as well. So I have to build some trust. Right. I can't just have somebody that doesn't know me from Adam all of a sudden give me thousands of dollars. It's just not going to work. Right. Because I have to build that confidence in them that I am the right person, that I'm not going to be a waste of their money and their, their time. Right. That I'm actually going to get some results. And you build that confidence by demonstrating your capability. You demonstrate that either you talk about results you've got in the past, or you talk about how you do it, or you teach them how you do it, right? Teaching is, is great for credibility, by the way. If you're wondering why I do stuff like this right now, I'm teaching this absolutely for free. It's because if you're listening to me teaching this for free, chances are you, you recognize that I know a thing or two about the subject that I'm talking about. I'm not just saying, Hey, give me money and I'll wave a magic wand and, and bring in customers to you. No, it's like, there's a process to this. There's some sophistication involved and I have a high level of high level of knowledge about this and I can help you to get the result that you desire. Otherwise, if I just say, Hey, I'm going to get you a hundred leads this month and I don't give you any kind of proof that that's the case, then how likely are you going to be to believe me? Probably not at all. And you shouldn't believe me, right? Like you shouldn't believe me just because I make a claim. There are a lot of people that make a claim that are full of it. So if I want you to believe me that I actually know my stuff and I can actually get you the result that you desire, then I have to do something to give you evidence that that's the case. Now I can't prove that like there's, there's never such thing as a hundred percent proof. 
The only proof is actually doing it. But I can get, I can give you a lot of evidence. I can show you, I can demonstrate firsthand that I know what I'm talking about here. And I can show you the results I've gotten in the past. And I can, all, there's other ways to get credibility too, or there's, there's other ways to prove that you know what you're talking about. So I can show credentials, right? You know, you can show your, your degrees or your awards. You can also cite authority figures. You can talk about, about like, you can cite quotes from people, or you can show studies like scientific studies that back up the things that you say, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like there's a lot of ways to do it, but um, you got to give it, you in your sales process at some point, if you want somebody to make a reasonably large commitment, then you have to pepper in these things that are going to increase their belief that you are able to get them the result that they want which is another part, uh, another thing to consider too, with the, with the, it depends on how, how simple versus how complex the thing that you sell is, right? Coffee is pretty simple. If you sell coffee, people know what coffee is. They know co how coffee is made. And so there's not really much doubt. If I go and I say, Hey, I sell coffee. Nobody's really skeptical. It's like, does that guy really know how to make coffee? Like, no, everybody pretty much believes that right off the bat. Whereas if I say I can get you leads through YouTube ads, well, that's something that's pretty sophisticated. It's something that's fairly difficult to do, something that not a lot of people are able to do. And so if I make that claim, then I have to back up that claim a lot more than somebody who's, who's selling coffee, right? So, so I will have in my sales process, I will have an ad that says, hey, click here to get this free guide. And this is what I call an indirect sales process, by the way, because I'm not advertising my service. In fact, I'm not even mentioning my service in the ad. I'm just saying, click here to get this free thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sell them after I built the credibility. And so, I give them this free guide to using YouTube ads, and then they re either read the guide or they, they read my emails, and then they, or they watch my videos, or they watch my free presentations, and they see that, hey, this guy actually knows his stuff. And eventually there's a point where they're like, okay, I actually believe that this guy might be able to help me get the result that I desire for myself or for my business. And so at that point, I have another step in the sales process and I'm, I'm kind of juggling two of these right now. I have two different kind of final conversion events. You might call it a conversion is when you actually get somebody to buy from you. So I have two conversion events. Number one is that I've been doing longer is a sales call. So I will have somebody book a 30 minute call with me. And in that call, I'll talk about, what is their situation? What are their goals? What are they looking to do? What are they doing already? What are the challenges? Like what's holding them back? And then if I think that I can help them based on what they have told me, then I will tell them exactly what I would do for them in their unique situation, right? Now this part is, is helpful because I'm tailoring it to them. It's not just like a one size fits all thing. Because just because, let's say I share in an email about the results that I got for one person. Well, just because I got the results for John does not mean that I can get the results for Harry. It doesn't mean that I can get results for somebody else, right? Because everybody's situation is a little bit different. And so it's very helpful to, for me to talk to somebody. And I don't charge for this, by the way. My, my first, my sales call is free. And I will just, and the sales call itself is very valuable, by the way, right? Like the way that I do it is I get very clear on what is the person's situation and what's the best way to get to their goals. And I tell them what's the best way to get their, get to their goals. So I'm like, this is the thing that I would do first. And then I would do this. And then I would do this. Now you can just take that information and run with it if you like, or if you would like me to help you to implement that information, then here's what I have to offer. And so that's when I present my, my paid offer to them. And more times than not, that person will 
at least be tempted to take up that offer because I've given them the context and shown them exactly what it is that I would do for them in their unique situation, right? And so from then, from, from there, I will sometimes take a payment immediately, sometimes make the sale immediately. Like a lot of times that's everything that the person needs to know to know that they wanna work with me. Or sometimes the person wants to think about it and the, they, still, they still don't trust 100% that this is the right thing, which is okay, right? And so ideally, we can work through that on the call and figure out whether or not it is or is not the right thing, which by the way, I like to be very upfront if I think that it is not the right thing for somebody because I don't want to work with anybody that I don't believe that I can get results for. Because if I don't get results for the person, then that reflects badly on me and the, the person's unhappy and it's, it's just like, it doesn't work out for anybody in the long run. It's like, yeah, I get paid in the short run, but in the long run, it comes back to bite me. So I would much, much rather be totally honest with the person and say, okay, for your specific business or your specific situation, I don't think I can help you. I, because, and I, I you know, I don't just say, I can't help you Bye, get out of here. <laughs> no, I say like, I, I can't help you because this, this like type of business, for example, doesn't meet the YouTube ads policies for, for advertising or your your price point is too low i don't think that i can get you good economics i don't think that i can make you money um, like we could sell your product but you're going to end up spending as much in ad costs as you're making in revenue and so it's going to eat up all your profits so like i don't think this is the best way and then i'll try to give them what i believe is the best way right so maybe i think that instead of trying to do youtube ads you should go and try to build an instagram follower for example, if that's, if that's the case, like if that's what I think, and then if I have any resources for that, you know, I'm not really a big expert on building an Instagram following, but I know of a few people who are, so I'll go say, go, go follow John Smith, who's really good at building an Instagram following that, like, that's where I'd recommend that you go next. Right. And so I'm obviously I'm losing the sale, but I'm saving myself a whole bunch of problems down the road. Plus, now I've, I've legitimately helped somebody for n asking nothing in return and the person is, is very happy with me. And so whenever somebody comes by and, and wants to do YouTube ads and like, and talks to this person in the future, who do you think they're going to send them to? Right? Me. They're going to send me the clients that, that I actually can help. Right? So it, it really works out well in the, um, in the future, or maybe in the future, they have a totally different business. And that business I can help them with. And so they come back to me. So that's how that works essentially. And then, and also sometimes, you know, sometimes the person is interested, but they're not ready to pull the trigger right just yet. And so then they, they are, they're listening to me at that point. And so they're reading my emails, they're watching my videos, they're coming to my free, my free stuff. Maybe they're buying my cheaper products, which is actually another part of the, the sales funnel that I left out, but I don't want to overcomplicate um, uh, over it too much. So they're continually hearing from me. They have already built up a certain level of trust. And so chances are in some time in the future that that person comes back and says, okay, I'm ready now. I'm ready to, to get started with you. So um, and Jim says, what is the minimum price point you need for YouTube ads? So that depends. Oh, oh, to like to advertise for yourself. That depends on a few factors, but my, my rule of thumb is a hundred dollars. And that's like a hundred dollars customer value, which is a whole other can of worms that I might get into later. But a, a customer value is let's say that you get a customer to buy a, a cup of coffee that costs five bucks and you know, maybe they buy a muffin too. And so it's 10 bucks. So is that customer worth 10 bucks? Well, chances are no. Chances are the customer is worth more because if they like the coffee and they like the muffin and they live in the area, then chances are they're going to come back. And maybe they're going to come back like three times a week for the next 10 years. So it could be that that customer is worth like 20 grand, even though they only spent 10 bucks the first time. So you got to, and this, this is why it's so important to know your numbers, by the way, in marketing. And I got a video on this, by the way, I think I call it like marketing math or something, if you want to check it out on my YouTube channel. 
but you want to know how much your customer value is. That's more important. So in my, it, it looks like, let's say that I have a coffee shop and I spend $20 to gain a customer. And then I, I get the customer and he comes in and he spends 10 bucks. Well, I just lost 10 bucks, right? I spent $20 to get a $10 order. That's no good. But if the customer continues get, coming back over and over and over again, well, now over the long term, I, I really, I spent $20 in ads to get a $20,000 customer. That's a pretty good result, right? So minimum price point, I say $100 customer value. So that might be like the jacket example. Chances are the person buys the jacket and they never come and they never buy anything else from you again. So if it's a hundred dollar jacket, then you sell that on YouTube ads and probably make a profit. Um, so that, yeah, that's kind of my rule of thumb, not to say that it can't work for something that's cheaper, but if you only sell it, if your, your total customer value is less than a hundred bucks, then I, I wouldn't let, I, if that's the case, I wouldn't take you as a client. Put it that way. I mean, unless there may be exceptions, like if you have something that's so like world changing, like the squatty potty, for example, that's a good exception. If you know the squatty potty, it was like one of the most successful YouTube ads ever. It's for this thing that you put on on your toilet that you can you can poop in a squat position rather than in a straight sitting position. And the YouTube ad does a really good job of explaining in a kind of funny way why it's better for you. And you're like you're you're meant to poop in that position and it's so much healthier for you. So that ended up working really, really well. But that's partly just because one, it was an exceptionally good ad. And two, it was a really good product and with a really good, simple explanation for why it works. But yeah, generally, 100 bucks is my cutoff. And which of your YouTube funnels are you finding working best for indirect sales? Your free guide, email opt-in, or VSL on the landing page with email opt-in? I, I don't ever put VSLs on the landing page. VSL is a video sales letter. I always just do a very simple landing page with just a headline and a like a, a order a form. And I've never found more complicated opt-in pages to work better. You just, for a, a free thing, you don't need it. It's kind of overkill. It's like the cup of coffee. You know, if you have a like a, a 30 minute infomercial to buy your coffee, well, like people are not gonna watch 30 minutes to, to learn about coffee. They're just gonna buy this stupid coffee and if it's good, they'll buy it again. If it's not, then they won't, right? So the same thing if you're giving away something for free there's just not a whole lot of convincing that you have to do and if you make it long and complicated you're actually going to scare more people away than than you bring in so back to where i was and i probably should have not taken that tangent but the the funnel i was describing is is a call funnel a call funnel works really, really well for anything that's that's somewhat expensive, let's say like over a thousand dollars lifetime value, and that you have to demonstrate some level of expertise, right? You have to build some level of trust that the thing is worth it. And you see, by the way, selling cars is very similar, right? You you like you people will rarely, and this is changing actually, and, and everything that I say here, by the way, is, is testable. Like don't take any of this for granted, but generally the way that you sell a car is, is you advertise the car saying, hey, here's this car that I got, here's how great it is, here's all the features, here's how cool it looks driving down the road and the, on the cliff beside the beach. And so come in here and, and like, here's why we're having this, this sale where the where it's our manager liquidation sale or whatever crap we call it <laughs> and come into our location and you can test drive the car and basically the, the when they come into the location they talk to the salesperson they ask questions they figure out what they want they gain the context they give them the they, they demonstrate the car that's the the test drive is a demonstration of the product 
so that the person gets comfortable with the idea that this is the right car for me and then they make the purchase right so a buying a car is a relatively large commitment it's not as big as a commitment as getting married or buying a house but it's still a pretty big commitment and so they do essentially the sales call model the sales call is a just a virtual version of the person visits the the car lot and has the conversation with the car salesman so that's the one way I do it. And then the next way that I do it that I've been building out recently, which is kind of cool, is I am sending a document in lieu of a sales call. So I'll send an email, and you've probably seen this from me already. I'll send an email that gives some context. So I talk about a specific problem, for example, that people face when generating leads from YouTube or generating leads in general or in business in general. And I, I show them a little bit about how I would go about solving that problem. And so I'm building some trust. I'm showing my expertise that I know something about this subject. And then what I, I do is say, I'm, I'm taking a few new clients this month. If you're interested, then hit reply and tell me you're interested. And then I will send you the information. So. The next step in the process, and by the way, this is my, my sales process too, is basically doing the same thing. It's, it's um, I have, I send them the free guide and then after they get the free guide, then I give them a pitch that's basically, hey, here's what I can do for you. If you would like the details, then just shoot me an email or reply to this email and I will send over the details. And so when somebody replies and notice that this is a funnel, right? So there's a, the people that see my ad and then there's the people that click on the ad and there's the people that opt in for the free guide. Then there's the people that reply saying that they're interested in the information. And then I send them the information and then a certain percentage of those people and the information is basically here, just all of the things that I offer. Here's what you're going to get as a result. And here's the price point. Here's how much it costs. And then a certain percentage of those people that, that are interested in that offer will, will reply to my email and say, yes, I want in. And then so I'll send those people a link to join, a link to, to pay and to join. And then a certain percentage of those people will actually pay and join the program, right? So that's my, my other funnel. So that one is a little bit it's it's less hands-on for me because now I don't have to take the time to do sales calls because sales calls take a lot of time. And especially if you get, if you have a sales call with the, the sort of person that just really, really likes to talk and you, you get some people that are kind of more interested in having a friend than they are in actually buying a product. So it, that gets very time consuming. Whereas just sending a document and ask, answering a few questions over email, if they have questions, that's a lot less time consuming. So that's another, but it's also, it's less effective, right? So I get, I get more sales and I get faster sales if I do the sales call than if I send the document. So the pros and cons die to both of them. And, and both of them work, by the way, back to my earlier point that whatever, like whatever different models you're looking at, chances are, more than one of those work. I seem to have gone out of focus suddenly. I don't know what happened with my camera. Oh, anyway, I won't worry about it now. So yeah, so that's the, that's my two sales funnels that I'm running right now. So back to the main question of what sales funnel should you have for your business? Well, the, higher the, the price or the higher the investment that is, and that counts in terms of time and energy as well, the higher the investment it takes to consume your product, then the longer your sales process has to be, right? The more you're going to have to build trust, the more information, the more time the person is normally going to spend on researching whether or not you are the right option or your product is the right option. And then also that is investment in, in relative terms to their ability to invest. So again, somebody who's a billionaire is going to, can buy a, a 
hundred thousand dollar car with that with barely even thinking about it but for a person on an average income is that's going to be very different right that, that's going to be a much bigger investment and then yeah and then the other oh the other point that i wanted to make is market sophistication and this is a big deal and i go over this in in great detail in my differentiator workshop so if you are already a client of mine or a community member then go into your members area and get the and look at the differentiator workshop i highly recommend this one like if you if you could only look at one of my workshops that's probably the one i would recommend for whatever kind of business you're in and whatever kind of advertising you're in this is huge and the and by the way, if you're not um, in one of my programs, you can also buy it. It's 100 bucks. If you're interested, just just shoot me a note and I'll send you the link. Um, but what that what I get into there in great detail is level of buyer sophistication. This is a really big deal because the depending on who you're selling to, your sales process may be different. So let's say that you want to, or let's, I'll use my own example. Let's say that I want to sell YouTube ads consulting to somebody who is already knows that YouTube ads is the best consult or the best advertising method method for them. It's the best way for them to get leads. They are already convinced of this. Like I had a good example of a lady that had a, a friend who was a dentist and he was getting he was getting tons of clients through YouTube ads and he was just raving about how amazing YouTube ads was. And so she contacted me. She already knew that she wanted to do YouTube ads because she had a personal friend who was getting great results from YouTube ads. Right. So that person is going to be a different, like a different message than the person who is not getting leads in their business. Maybe they're just, Oh, my focus came back. Amazing. Maybe they're just getting referrals or maybe they're just getting like walk-ins, but they're not advertising at all. They don't know the first thing about marketing and they have no idea how they, they want to market their business, right? The messaging or the, the funnel, the sales process for those two different people may be completely different, right? Because the person who already knows that she wants to do YouTube ads and she already knows that that's the answer. Well, all I have to do is get her from, I want to do YouTube ads to I want to do YouTube ads with you. Whereas the person who has no idea, there's a few steps in there, right? So they know that they want to get leads. And so I have to convince them that the best way to get leads is through YouTube ads for their specific situation. The best way to get leads is, is YouTube ads. And only after I've shown them that the best way for them to get leads is YouTube ads, then I can show them that I am the best way to like my product is the best way for them to implement YouTube ads. Right. And so that's, that's where my free guide comes in and my indirect method, right? That's for people who are, don't really know what it is that they, they don't know the mechanism. They don't know the, the way to get the thing they want, right? They know what they want. They want more leads. They want more customers, but they don't know how to get it. So I, I first sell them on YouTube ads is the best way to get it. And that's what my free guide is doing essentially. And then after I've persuaded them that YouTube ads is the way to get to their goals, is the way to get leads and customers into their business. At that point, then I can tell them contract with me, or I shouldn't use the word contract because I actually don't use contracts, but say hire me and I will get you tons of leads and tons of customers using YouTube ads. Right. But I have to, I can't skip that step in between. If I just try to go from, Hey, the person's lost and needs leads. And I say, Hey, I can, I can get you leads through YouTube ads. It's like, I first need to sell them on the YouTube ads before they sell, I sell them on me. And then there's other cases where it's like, there's even longer process. For example, let's say you, you want to sell life insurance. Well, most people are not really readily aware of the need for life insurance. Most people, at least I think, are not really thinking about their debt, especially if they're, you know, younger. So if you want to sell life insurance to somebody, 
you first have to make them aware that there's a possibility that they might die and leave their wife without any any like sustenance right and then once you've made them aware of the problem then you have to make them aware of the solution it's like okay the way that you avoid this is through life insurance and then you have to once you've gone gotten them convinced of that, then you sell them on, it's my particular life insurance. And if you're an agent for a particular life insurance company, then there's another step still. And that is, okay, you should, you know, you're convinced that you should get life insurance through Allstate, but you should buy your Allstate life insurance through me, the Allstate agent, right? So you got to bring them through that whole, like all the steps in that process. And so your sales process has to bring them through all of those. So depending on, and it may be in many cases that you can sell multiple different people. Like there's people who are already out there looking for all state life insurance and just want an agent. Those are going to be the easiest to sell to, but it's also the smallest number. And there's going to be people that sh could benefit from life insurance, but don't really realize it and don't really see any problem with their current situation being unlife insured. <laughs> So you have to, and you can create separate sales processes, or you can create kind of hybrid sales processes that talk to multiple groups of those people with different levels of, of sophistication. And Jim says, what's the range for customer acquisition costs? That is all over the place. It's a good question. It, it depends on a lot of things. So on YouTube, I feel like this could be a, a long rabbit hole, but I'll try to give you the, the basics of this. If you're advertising on YouTube, you are charged per impression. So per person who sees your ad, you're charged like a fraction of a cent. How much you're charged per impression depends on who you're targeting and how many other people are trying to target that that person and what is the budget of the other people who are trying to target that person so if i'm trying to target let's say millionaires in the city of orlando florida well there are not very many of those people right there's not a lot of millionaires that live in orlando florida and they're also a pretty desirable audience Right. Like people in general, more people want to advertise to rich people than want to advertise to poor people because they can get more money from rich people than they can from poor people. So if that's the case, then I'm going to pay a very high cost per impression. Whereas if I'm targeting the entire United States of America and I'm targeting just like anybody it, it, let's say i'm even targeting people that are below fifty thousand dollars a year in income then that's going to be a much much cheaper audience the amount of money i pay for impression is going to be a lot lower for that audience and then it also depends on the sales funnel so if i'm selling a five dollar cup of coffee then the percentage of people who see my ad that go on to buy the coffee is going to be considerably higher than if I'm selling a $20,000 consulting package, right? Just because it's a lot easier to say yes to a $5 cup of coffee than a $20,000 consulting package. So my, it's called the conversion rate. The conversion rate's gonna be higher. So the amount of money that I spend per customer to get the, to buy the coffee is gonna be a lot cheaper than the amount that I'm paying per customer to buy the consulting package. And then also the, the locality comes into play, right? So if I'm targeting the entire world, then I can get a, a lower cost per impression than if I'm targeting like one zip code. So there's a lot that goes into it. And the, the main takeaway there is not that there's like a certain cost per impression that, that you'll get just across industries. It's what is a good cost for cost per impre or rather a good cost per acquisition cost per customer for considering your the amount of money that you make. So if you make twenty thousand dollars on the sale, then you can afford to spend ten thousand dollars to acquire a customer, 
right? Whereas if you make $10 on a sale, then you, you can't afford to spend $10 to get a customer. I mean, well, you can, if you can sell them on the back end, maybe so, but like, otherwise you're just going to be making nothing. So what's a, an amazing cost per acquisition for one industry, maybe a terrible one for another industry or for another product because of that. Cool. So I hope this was helpful, guys. And I think that I've, I've gone over about as much as I can for tonight. So thanks for being here. Thanks for, for participating. And we do this every single week. It's at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday and same link every week. So if you want to learn about a bunch of cool marketing stuff absolutely for free, then join us next week and have a great night. I'll see you later.